another way of considering answering the question what is the probability of passing if you guess on every question would be to consider the likelihood of failing using the binomial cumulative density function. And the way the binomial cumulative density function works as follows. We go to second function distribution and using the up arrow not go to zero but go to letter A the binomial cumulative density function. I'm going to select that and the binomial cumulative density function gives us a syntax very similar to the binomial probability density function. The difference is that the cumulative density function is going to give us the cumulative probabilities up to the specified number. For example, let's consider the probability of passing the true-false test. Well, the opposite of passing would be failing, and you either pass or fail the test. So if we wanted to know the probability of passing the test, we could consider finding the probability of failing the exam and subtracting that from 100% or 1.00 as a decimal. So if we take the binomial cumulative density function and use it to determine the probability of failing the exam, again a 10 question test on which the probability of guessing correct is 0.5 on any problem. And if we're considering failing, the probability of failing would be getting none correct, one correct, two correct, three correct, four correct, five, per five correct, or six correct. In other words, the number six here gives us the cumulative density leading up to six. This would be analogous to the following. So the binomial cumulative density function looks at the graph and says, well, what if we were to add the probability of getting none correct with the probability of getting one correct and then two correct, three correct, four correct, five correct, and then six correct. The probabilities leading up to six correct and including six correct is the probability we would fail by guessing. If we then subtract that from 100% or 1 as a decimal, we will be left with the probability of passing. So going back to our home screen, we can modify this by taking the probability of failing, and I'm going to use the insert key, inserting here 1.00 minus that probability. And by doing that, we now are considering the probability of passing. In other words, 100% minus the probability of failing the exam. And when we do that, our answer is approximately 17%. Remember, this is a decimal. And comparing this to the answer we got by adding the probabilities, we see that they indeed agree very favorably. In a similar way, we could use the TI-83 to consider the probability of passing by using the binomial cumulative density function. We'll do that as follows. This time we're looking at a 10-question multiple choice test where each question had four choices and we're interested in the probability of passing. Again, we'll consider taking 100% or 1.00 
and subtracting from 100% or 1 the binomial cumulative density function which we know now is letter A and again the syntax is the same there are 10 questions there is a 0.25 probability of getting any one question correct and a comma and now because we're interested in the probability of passing the exam we'll take 1 minus the probability of failing and failing an exam would be six questions or less and when we hit enter we get approximately three tenths of one percent again remember this is a decimal equivalent of a percent and to get the percent we'll move the decimal point two places so we get approximately point three five percent which again compares very favorably with our answer that we got using the method of adding the probabilities together. Finally we'll do this very similar problem for the 10 question multiple choice test with five choices on each. And once again, doing the same problem using the binomial cumulative density function to finding the probability of passing, we'll take 100% minus the probability of failing. So 1 or 100% minus the second function distribution. And since we know it's the letter A, we can just simply say alpha A and here again is the binomial cumulative density function 10 questions the probability of getting any one correct is 0.2 and to fail you need to get 6 or less correct so we'll here put the number 6 and when we hit enter we get 8.6 times 10 to the negative fourth this is scientific notation. E negative 4 means times 10 to the negative 4th. That will move this decimal place 1, 2, 3, 4 places, which will give us three zeros. Again, this is the decimal equivalent of a percent, which would make that approximately 0.08%. And that compares again quite favorably with the answer that we got using the addition method of the individual probabilities. So the binomial cumulative density function can be used very nicely to find these probabilities of passing using the idea of the complement of a set using 1 minus the probability of failing to find the probability of passing and we use that because the binomial cumulative density function, when we look at the graph, takes the cumulative probabilities going from left to right up to a particular number. And that particular number is the number that we put here, which would correspond to the highest grade you could put in and still fail.